God, it's so cold. I can't catch my breath. What is up everyone and welcome back to another Ref6 weekly vlog. So if you'd have watched last week's vlog, I was in Boston and this week I'm in Denmark for work. So I have a game Saturday and it uh, is at Chichester versus Seven Oaks. Two teams we've not done before. Both of my assistants, one of them you would have met before, it's Red, my training partner, which is Gray. And another one is Scott, who we had at Tooting and Mitcham. So in terms of the week, we're just working out here. So I'm still going to have to find ways to train. However, there is a key issue. One, I don't have access to a gym because we're at some sort of beach house in the middle of nowhere. So no access to the gym. Two, it snowed. So training and running might be a little bit more difficult in terms of getting out and going straight away. So it might be road running because the roads are gritted. So it's just a problem that we've got to overcome this week. Um, today is Tuesday. So we are four days out from match day. So it should be an interval session today, um, sort of one kilometers on, one kilometer off, but we'll see how we get on. And I might try and do some hit sessions to keep um, sort of the like body weight stuff done. So it means when I get back to the gym next week, I'm okay. But as always, we're looking forward to it. Come along for the ride. We're working on positioning this week and we're being assessed because positioning in open play seems to be a real problem. But come along for the ride and I will catch you through the week. One of the things we did in Denmark was paddle tennis. Now, this is like indoor tennis mixed between squash and tennis. It's one of the fastest growing sports at the moment. It was really good fun. Um, what it was is lots of short, sharp sprints, uh, which allowed me to keep my cardio up. Um, and obviously we love doing a speed session, which I wasn't able to get and do because of the snow. So this was a great thing. And I was unbelievable at it, as you can see. So bonus. Uh, so it is 24th today, it's Thursday. And David come in, has decided it's a good idea to get in the sea. So I guess here goes nothing. God, it's so cold. I can't catch my breath. <laughs> Several days later. Good morning, everyone. So it is 9 a.m. It is match day, and I'm looking forward. To, mm, I'm not quite up for it yet. I'm still quite tired, quite fatigued. But I'm sure as the day goes on, I'm obviously traveling with Red. As soon as I meet him, I'm sure everything will gear up a little bit. I just feel quite lethargic. I'm being assessed today as well, so I need to get over that. Uh, but it's match day, so the plan today is go for a quick walk, put some music in this time to G myself up, you know, slowly get back into it, pack my kit bag, have my pre-match meal, and then Red is meeting me here. So everything's planned, everything's ready to go, I just need to psych myself up a little bit. Right, okay, so pre-match walk is done, slightly feeling a little bit more G'd up for it. A uh, few texts from my mates as well, being like, welcome back, because obviously got back last night. So, I've laid out all my kit. So I know I've got everything for today, but this is what I'm packing for, an Ishmin South East game. Start off, we've got Nike boots and we've got Adidas boots in here, um, as well as crime sheets. That's obviously from the last game. Box of tricks, sweets, star mix, wash bag, bottles of water, tablets, gel, buzzer flags with spare batteries, always pack spare batteries, otherwise you'll get stung like me. Warm-up stuff, so I've got mid-layer and I've got a t-shirt. Two match kits, two towels, one for the floor because it gets wet, and one for me to dry myself. Two match tops, the new one, last season's one. Two pairs of match socks. Undershort, I need to get an undershirt. I think I'm gonna go long sleeve today, actually. That's a decision I'll make in a minute. Bag for dirty washing, two pairs of match socks, true socks, Nike socks. Bang, that is the stuff. So I'm going to pack this up and have pre-match. Catch you in a second. Pre-match meal time. As we predicted earlier or said earlier, it is a fish finger sandwich. So it's fish fingers, mayonnaise, sriracha, rocket. Um, so it should... I've also got sweets, gels, and energy tablets as well to keep me going. All I need to do now is get out of this jumper, do my hair quickly, and then we're ready to go. I've got 15 minutes to get ready. So as always, my pretty much playlist is here. Red is gonna have to suffer through it today, but I'm sure he'll add something to the playlist as well. And yeah, let's get this show ready to go.
Hello, Redmond. Hello, hello. How did you find that today? Well, apart from being wet and cold, it wasn't too bad. It's not a bad little day out, that. Obviously, we're being assessed. Yes. Does that add to the nerves of the game for you? Uh, slightly. Yeah. Because, um, again, you've got to go out and put performance in. You know you can do it, but, again, with an assessor day, you try to make sure you're nailing the right things, and with especially me running the line, making sure I'm just giving myself that thinking time with giving offsides, making sure I don't go early with offsides, because that's very embarrassing. We don't want to do that, but... Um, yeah, just make sure you take your time, make sure the player come active, contact with the ball's even better, and yeah. then just give the offsides. But um, no, and then make a choice also. You want to do well for the referee in the middle, to be honest. I mean, you're all right, but yeah. <laughs> you, want, you don't want to drop him in it because, again, it's a team and uh, you want the referee to do well. So that's a little bit nerve. No, that's true. I thought working with the captains was very easy with one team and very difficult with another. Yeah. In terms of the away team, wanted to talk, but it was more talking at me not talking with me if that makes sense definitely a game you had to keep on keep on your toes there was never a moment where you could relax um, and then seeing out the game in the last 15 was important yeah how do you think i got on well <laughs> well honest no um, yeah i thought it was a good game again literally from minute one there was a, there was an opportunity to play advantage pull back with a foul and i think that was within the first minute so straight away from there you knew you had to be on it you were there gave the foul moved well i mean yeah. doing off running in the week to be honest so yeah, i think yeah. didn't move well um, but yeah, I think I think, and he didn't look out didn't look out of place out there. Which again, first year of three, yeah, you, absolutely. You, I didn't look at you and go, mm, right, is he falling away a little bit here? Is he losing concentration? You were constantly on the money, worked it myself and Richard, the other lino, well, giving us little hand singles down below and then upstairs for the talking. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I think you had a good game. Some oh. definitely first half, no caution. Second half, there were, there were five in there, I believe. So. Yeah. Would be correct. You definitely were on commission with the yellows. But yeah. <laughs> no, um, yeah, so I'd say you had a good game. But I ran 10.86k, which is one of the highest of the seasons for me, and Red ran 5.6. 5 5.6. 5.6. So I'll put our stats on the screen here uh, so you can look. Um, but it's time for us to finish driving home. We've got another 45 minutes to drive home. And the assessor. Uh, said I did well, he said I controlled the game well, so the feedback was good because now we can have the debrief straight after the game. So feedback was good, wasn't it? I didn't, yep, I think it was very solid, fair. very fair, seemed like a really nice guy and I will talk to you guys tomorrow after my recovery run, but thanks for joining me for the for a chat. Sweet as, love it. So I'm back at Ref6 HQ after a couple of days, so I've let everything sink in. I'm just going to go through obviously being assessed, what it's like, how we go about things and how everyone gets assessed at this level, as well as you know how the elites get assessed and how we get assessed at grassroots level as well. But before I go into that, I'm just going to take you through my, my ref six stats for the game. As you would have seen in the car with Red, I ran 10.69k, which is one of the highest of the seasons that I've run. Um, and that's down to the fact that there was a lot of end-to-end -end action. So if we look at my heat map, we can see there's a big splodge in the middle where a lot of the game was played, but obviously it stretches quite wide down into both corners, which I'll highlight here. In terms of my sprint map, though, which is where, in my opinion, the assessor picked up on my great performances, was obviously look at these big, long sprints going into those sort of far wide areas. Um, there was only one high speed sprint, but a lot of oranges, which means that I probably don't need to be sprinting as hard. Uh, but I'm definitely running at fast pace to get towards where the play is happening and getting into the right positions. Um, the interesting thing for me, what I looked at through these ref six stats was at the end of the game, I looked and I felt tired uh, the next day. And I looked at my heart rate data and I can see that I spent a lot of time in zones four and zones five, which meant that going into the Sunday recovery run, I had to take it slower because my body had already worked hard the day before. So looking at these stats allowed me to you know, tailor my recovery the next day, which is really important because if I'd gone out too hard, um, I would have knackered myself for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then it would have had a knock-on effect for the rest of the training week. Um, but if you want these kind of stats, there's a link in our description. And if you use the code YouTube, you can get an extra 20% off. Now, assessments, something that we talk about quite a lot um, in these games and never really cover enough of how the process is. So it starts off at the start of the week when you've got your fixture, you get appointed an assessor. They contact you, uh, telling you what time they want to be there and if they want to listen to your team talk. And from there, uh, at my level, we get assessed at 50% of our games. That's a minimum criteria. So every other game um, is usually the case. Sometimes you'll get two in a row and then not 
one for another couple of weeks, but usually it's in 50% of our games. Um, and then this mark gets put into a big spreadsheet and then you can see where you are in the table and then they take the top roughly 10% of all referees to the next level. And that works in England, especially for levels four, three, two, one. And that's how you get promoted. Uh, at grassroots level in England, uh, what happens is, is you get assessed five times throughout the whole season. And this means um, that you never know when that assessment is going to come. You always find out a couple of days before and they mark you on different criteria. So it's all about match control, um, application of law, making sure you're applying the laws correctly. Can you manage the game correctly? Um, your fitness and movement is a, is a big key area. So as you go up the levels, you get more, we call them competencies. So at level seven, there's only five competencies. And at level three, there's like nine. And each one has a different weighting. So match control and application of law, are the highest weighted ones. So that they're the ones you want to get right, making sure that you're giving those mandatory cautions, sending offs and making sure you're controlling the game well. At the elite level, it's a completely different kettle of fish, really. They get marked on every single decision, every throw in, every free kick. Um, and then they get judged if that was incorrect or correct. And then they get an overall score at the end. So if they gave 100 decisions and got two throw ins wrong, they'll get an overall score of 98 percent. And that's what they're marked on at both the Premier League, the Football League and the elite levels of the World Cup and UEFA. But what we can do um, to help us progress is, for example, in my assessment, the assessor said that I got too close to my assistant for uh, crosses into the box. So if we look at my heat map here, we can see, especially down this corner that I'll highlight for you, is where my assistant would be. And I spend more time here than I do over here in this far corner. Now, the assessor pointed this out for me and we can see it in my stats. At what point does it benefit me being that close to my assistant when I know the ball is going into the box? Um, I should be standing the other side of my assistant so I've got the ball between me and my assistant and that means I can see more angles. We've got more angles covered. It's all about how much we can cover between our eyes and we can see I did it on the other side as well. I didn't get far enough away from my assistant and let them deal with the free kicks that they were going to be close to them. And that's what we call expected decisions. They're expected to give that free kick so I can go and look into the box. And we can see that in this heat map and that's something that I can go and work on in my next few games, um, especially look at my heat map. Am I getting wide enough and far enough away from my assistant? Um, you know, where I can trust them and I can see pulls in the box, pushes in the box. And it makes my overall match control, which another thing that the assessors will pick up, a, you know, bigger marks. Because it's about finding those little 1% that make you different. Because at these levels, it's a one mark that can take you from being a good level three to a 2B. And especially at grassroots level, it's that one little mark that can take you from being a 7 all the way to a 5, potentially. Um, and it's just those little things that we've got to look at in the data. Um, that helps us improve. So that has been sort of an assessment overview. Overall in the game, uh, my assessment came back as a, as a high 72, which puts me above the group average, which I'm very pleased with. Um, Red did really well out of the game as well. Um, so overall it was a very productive day for us and we really enjoyed it. Uh, but that has been this week's vlog. Tune in next week for where we are going to be on the line at Tunbridge Angels. I look forward to seeing you there, but don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you at the next F6 video.